Well, Tyler, while we have you here, one of the things that we are going to be doing is kind of an annual meeting recap um, as part of our podcast that will go out on the 22nd. And we may use some excerpts from um, the presentation you did, but I know we had a couple of questions we wanted to maybe ask you since we're recording the open hall, um, if you're willing, that, that we could use as well sure. in the podcast. Yeah, Here's sure. That. Okay. Um, so some of these are podcast worthy and some of these are just my curiosity mm -hmm. and someone else who's mine. Well, um, so you heard a lot today about being in for, uh, does that terminology bother you in, in any way? Do you, do you know where I'm going with it? Uh, it you cut out just a little bit. So let me make sure you said using the terminology being referred to as visually impaired. Is that what you said? No, that when people talk. Paul, you're cutting out just a little bit. Okay. Um, I'm going to hope this, and it's not the, the audio. It's just got to be this, this, this internet. Yeah. It's the, the inspiration, the term you're an inspiration. Ah, Okay. Okay. Um, I copy. Uh, you know what? Uh, I do, but I don't. <laughs> and that's not a straightforward answer, but I, I, uh, it, it bothers me a little bit because um, in order to be an inspiration, there, there's this assumption, right, that you are um, rising above what should be your normal life circumstance right so there, there's kind of that assumption of like hey you're visually impaired but you're doing a really good job you're, you're such an inspiration because the assumption is being visually impaired means that your life should be pretty miserable right and um so in a sense yeah, yeah i mean i guess that can bother me a little bit but truthfully it really doesn't because here's the thing um whether a person who is viewing my story my circumstances from the outside is standing at a point of like, I think all visually impaired people have have no troubles or they have a ton of them. Like whatever their assumption is, like if my story inspires them to do better and to kind of change those assumptions for the better, then then that's totally fine with me. I don't mind being an inspiration in that point at that point or referred to as an inspiration because that's my mission is to make people think differently about themselves and um, to be better you know, than, than what they were before. So in the end, it doesn't really bother me. So I've heard of the Holman prize and I have gotten emails and things about it, but uh, can you talk a little bit about that process, how that went and what happened when you were selected? Was it just one person that selected? Yeah, it's a the good question. So uh, there, there are actually three finalists that that win the prize. So um, the the Lighthouse of San Francisco began this program in uh, 2017. So this is the fourth year that they've done it, and um, the um, the cool thing about this prize is like it's it's really become very prestigious very quickly. So the there were, I think it was 109 applicants total from something like 23 countries around the world. Um, and those were sifted through and, you know, there was a lot of really good ones, but they kind of broke that down to, okay, so here's our um, kind of quarter finalists, maybe you could call it in athletic terms. There was like 36 uh, projects that were that were put out there that said, okay, these are, these are pretty viable ones that we want to promote. And uh, from there, there was more, you know, a more of an interview process that happened and it was promote your video out and see how many YouTube likes you can get and things like that. And then that was broken down to uh, 16 finalists, I believe, uh, or 16 semifinalists. And then from there, the three finalists were chosen uh, each finalists receiving a $25,000 grant and, uh, you know, being able to tap into the, the extensive network at the lighthouse. So myself for the revision fitness project, a doctor in Nepal who has a really cool project that he's doing to not only help, uh, detect 
in breast cancer, but to help promote uh, job employment for blind women. And then a uh, special educator in India, a woman who wants to go to like the rural parts of India and teach people who are blind and visually impaired who don't really tend to get the access that, that they should otherwise. So some very cool projects. And it is, is definitely a process to go through. It's a very extensive process. And when they called me to, to tell me that I won, it was funny because they, they said, hey, you know, we just have a few more questions for you. And I was like, okay, that's fine. And so they scheduled the call. I got on there and it's was like, okay, well, we got a few more people jumping on. It ended up being like their CEO and a whole bunch of people. I was like, why do we need so many people to ask me a question? <laughs> and then like, <laughs> then he's like, Hey, I just wanted to let you know, you won the Holman prize. And I was like, Oh, I get it now. Sweet. You know? <laughs> so it was, it was really cool. They, they very great group of people and, and it's been a great experience thus far. So the business was already started before the prize, right? Essentially, yeah. So I had this idea pop into my head um, some time ago, um, and I've been I've been working at it and kind of putting my my own sweat equity and finances and stuff into it. And um, somebody said, "Hey, you know, this is a really great project that you're working on. You should apply for the Holman Prize." And I was like, "Well, what's that?" So I looked it up and just kind of you know rolled the dice with it and uh, ended up coming out a winner. So I was very very st- stoked about that. So you did say we can go online and view it now, right? We can sort of see. You can. Yep, you can. So um, there's a lot to be uh, worked on with the platform. So that here's here's the thing. It's it's kind of a twofold process, right? So there's content and platform. Um, the the website is live. You can go to revisionfitnessapp.com. And you can sign up, you can start working through the lessons that I've got posted on there, the workouts that I've got posted. I'm getting some really positive feedback on those. Um, There's still some functions and features that we're building out. There's uh, fitness plans that are going to be posted pretty soon. So like you can go in and say like, Hey, uh, I want to lose weight. I want to tone up and there'll be preset fitness plans that you can kind of follow the workout schedules. And I, I build in like, uh, tips and tricks for, for you based off of my years of experience as a trainer. So it's all going to be part of your membership. Like your, your membership gives you access to all of that stuff as it, as it comes out, there'll be a message board where you can kind of start building a community. Um, you can comment on workouts, uh, the, you know, just lots and lots of features that are going to be rolling out as we go forward with this. Um, at some point in the future, uh, near future, hopefully I'm going to be converting it to an app for Apple and Android as well. Uh, right now it's just web, web-based, but totally accessible. Um, and we're, we're working really hard to make sure that it stays accessible and will stay accessible for the blind. What equipment would somebody need to get started? That's a really good question. So the point of the program is to be able to uh, work with and address any level from no equipment to uh, a full assortment of equipment. So the program's launched right now with all uh, body weight type exercises. Um, the content that I'm building out, uh, the, the next thing that I'm working on right now is building out yoga uh, content. You know, So like the most equipment you would need right now is maybe a mat or something like that. But for the most part, it's just some space and it's just body weight movements. Um, The program, as we go along and as I build more of that content, there's going to be uh, free weights, uh, resistance bands, um, TRX straps, uh, machines, treadmills, rowing machines, um, workouts for any of that type of equipment. Uh, But you don't need any of that to go on and get in a full workout program. Okay. Um, to check that out. I'm curious for my own to see what's there. So are you familiar with the blind alive, that thing that used to be around? Yes. Uh, actually, yep. Yep. No, I, uh, Mel Scott, who put that together, I've actually, um, conversed with her quite a bit. Um, when I got this project started and I saw her program, I actually reached out to her and said, Hey, I, 
have this idea. And she was, she was very cool. She's a very neat person. And she's like, uh, you know, here's my story. She kind of told me how the blind alive program came about and what she was trying to do with it. And really, uh, it's been a neat kind of, uh, passing of the torch. She's been very excited about my project, promotes it like crazy and says, you know, like the, what she did was super cool. She still gets emails from people about like, Hey, this has really helped me out a lot. And it's such a great resource. My plan is to, to take that, uh, concept and build it out even further. Um, because you know, as awesome as it is, some of the things that it doesn't include, like we talked about is, uh, you know, machines, how do you lift weights? How do you, uh, do, um, those types of common exercises that are accessible for people with vision, but not so much with people who are visually impaired. So my pr program will have quite a bit more width and depth to it. Uh, if that makes sense. It, uh... And feeling like the very last part of uh, your talk, I was the one that people seemed to to jump to the most. I know it's what, what Leanne said in the chat, and that was what I wrote down as like the top highlight for the for the podcast. So um, that's what I'm going to push for that we include. Cool. Whatever else, whatever else we get into today. Uh, you know, that'll, that'll all be extra stuff. Um, but that to cool. me seems like, like, uh, I had a couple of others too. And I'm like, uh, yeah, I'm just writing these things down. Where sure, are we going to go? Where time. are we going to go with this? But that was, um, I think that's the one that, that seemed to be, cause t to be about as blunt as I know how to be, that's the angle you don't hear taken very much in my opinion the you're referring to the way that i kind of finished out my my talk Is yeah that, i mean yeah. because you know it's it you know you get the whole tony robbins you can do it success, success stuff and it can at times be fluff but they don't really kind of deal with what happens if you end up in second or third and not fourth and not first right. you know right. yeah so i appreciated that I'm glad. I'm glad. And it's, it's such a cool thing for me to be able to, to share that because, and I, and I, hopefully I portrayed this well during my speech. It, it is something that I had to figure out. You know, I, I, <laughs> I'm holding onto this metal going like, man, what do I do with this? I, I, it was, uh, it was disappointing. It was challenging. And then I, I had to sit back and really think like, is that, is that really truly the goal though? And, uh, I, it was such an awesome life lesson to learn. And I think it is important for people to understand. So how will your approach be different in next year's games than they would have been in 2016? So, you know, from, from just a tactical structural standpoint, um, you know, we have some different approaches that we're making as a team, as far as, uh, um, coaching staff and uh the way that we are playing uh, ourselves so a lot of the foundational pieces are very similar you know um have those positive habits i'm training daily um with my team i'm pushing myself a lot physically and mentally to to just be a better athlete so you know um Certainly, I recognize my body can't do that much, <laughs> that elite level of training for too, too long. So it is likely that Tokyo will be uh, be my last run at it. And, and certainly my eyes are on that gold medal. But, you know, again, it's to me, um, I recognize now that there is there is so much more depth to life than just that that one thing. And once you achieve that one thing what's beyond that you know the thing about seeking greatness within yourself is you can constantly do that you can always be seeking that greatness within yourself um once you win a gold medal you've won your gold medal and then you you flip to the next chapter you know and i don't mean to be flippant about it it's a great thing you know but uh, uh 
I feel like my approach will be so much more uh, of just enjoying the moments and, and reaching for the best I'm able to do. Good. Well, find a solution, right? We're adaptable. <laughs> yep, <laughs> so. exactly. Where, where cool. are you? What state are you in? I'm in Indiana. Okay, uh, so I'm, you're really I'm not far, far from us. No, I'm, I'm not far from y'all. So I'm, okay. Uh, where are you originally, in Indiana? Uh, Fort Wayne. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah, so pretty pretty far up north. But um, I'm originally from Michigan, lived in Florida the last six years, just moved to Indiana um, about a year ago and moved up here to prepare and train for the Tokyo Games. And then they got postponed and my wife cried because she went, doesn't want to spend another winter in, <laughs> back in the Midwest. She's from Michigan too. And there's a reason we ended up in Florida. She hates the cold. So hmm. but, uh, we're, we're making it work. It's, 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 the community is wonderful. She just hates the weather. So what do you do? I lived in Florida for a while and I have to say I, I did get used to it. I miss the, the change of seasons, but my first winter back up here, boy, it was it was hard enough to turn around and run back to Tampa. Mm, right. <laughs> right. Yeah, I don't I don't think we would go that far south again. Uh my son, uh his fiance lives in Georgia. Uh so we spent some time there. So we're thinking like if we head back south, we probably wouldn't go as far. We'd interested maybe in like Tennessee or Georgia somewhere in that area where the winters aren't so crazy hard but we're also not dealing with the craziness of Florida either yeah, yeah. we were down near Miami so it, it was loco oh sure. yeah yeah I bet but uh yeah whole different whole different world down there um but yeah okay cool so uh if y'all want to make an announcement, do you, should I email Leanne and just let her know those plans as well? Or I just what? messaged her through the app okay. and I messaged uh, Heather as well, who actually takes care for, set, uh, for setting up the app. So what I'm hoping is they can maybe mention that at sessions this afternoon okay. Okay. and then um, in, in the morning as well. Okay. Super cool. Well, I will definitely plan on jumping on tomorrow at 12. And um, I guess then if anybody wants to connect with me, I'm happy to do that. Thank you so much. Thank and I'm you. sorry for the confusion. Oh, no worries. No worries. I'm glad we got something figured out. So thank you guys so much. We'll, uh, we'll talk to you about tomorrow. Okay. okay. Thanks. Thanks, Thanks, Tyler. Yeah. All right. I'm, uh, but she's going to come in here just and miss him. Yeah. Hi, Mary Noel. Hi. Were you coming in to um, talk to Tyler or were you coming in to ask some questions about um, APH? Actually, I was trying to um, explore the app. Oh, and, good. And then I was um, trying to get into uh, different rooms and I think that I have a time zone issue and um, and then they, I kept getting asked for a code and I'm not sure where the code is but hi. <laughs> hi. Well I can tell you if you're asked for a code for any of the rooms and let me hold on let me be sure I'm going to give you the right code before I tell you. Um, the code for every single room, if you're asked for it, you should not be, but it might be something on your end, is AM 2020. So annual meeting 2020, AM 2020. So if you're asked for a code to enter any of the rooms, just put that in and you should be good. Is there, what meeting were you, what session were you trying to get into? Oh, I've been out visiting students. I'm a TBI oh. and O and M and um, just got back to the office and, and um, I had signed up for several classes or several sessions beforehand because I didn't know exactly what my schedule was going to be like, honestly, to know which ones I could grab. But um, you said there's somebody here named Tyler. Well, he was. He's going to be back tomorrow. Our keynote speaker, oh, uh, yeah. Tyler Marin, was in here with us. But he's going to come back to the open hall tomorrow at noon. So, okay. Um, 
Yeah. Um, but yeah, so you shouldn't, you know, if you, if you're in the app, there's one option that's my schedule. And then there's one option that's all sessions. And so if you would want to go to a session that, um, you didn't sign up for. If you go to all sessions instead of my schedule, you can still get into something that you didn't sign up for. Okay, I will do that then. Um, and so just so I'm in the right time zone, is it two o'clock where you are? It is, we are on the Eastern time zone. Yes. Okay, and I'm in central time zone, okay. Yes, right. so we've got, um, there's a, a set of concurrent sessions that just wrapped up. There is a break from 2 to 2.30, and the next round of sessions that includes Barriga and something on the Connect Center and customer service, a session on our embossers, a session on some of our refreshable Braille, those are all going to start at 2.30, so you have a little bit of a break before the next thing starts. Good. Well, thank you so very much. You have been most helpful. I um, probably the reason I couldn't get in the other ones is because of the time zone and yeah, and they were removed. But oh. and I did try that AM twenty twenty in some of them, but then it's like um, it got removed. So I'm like, okay, maybe uh -huh. it's the time zone thing. So, <laughs> alrighty. Okay. Does um, it matter? I'm sorry. Does that does it matter, Leslie, if it's capital letters or not? I don't think so. I just cut and pasted it in there. Okay, that should so, work. So, and then. I think they were capital. Okay. So, um, okay. Well, thank you very much. You You're guys welcome. have a great rest of the day. I'm probably will see you around. Okay. <laughs> okay. Bye. Hey, May May Ann. How are you? We're good. How are you? This is good. Leslie and Paul. We're both Hello. part of APH's team. Well, this has been such an exciting opportunity. Thank you so much. Um, yesterday was amazing. Today, this morning was awesome. So it's always been a dream to be able to attend, but I wasn't able to attend in the past. So this is fantastic. What do you do? Currently, I'm a transition worker for um, counselor for Mass Commission for the Blind. I work with 14 to 22 year old transitioning youth under the Pre-Ets program. But prior to that, I was with the Carroll Center for the Blind for 20 years as an itinerant TVI and then assistant director for education services. That's great. Did you have any questions that we could help you with about products or anything with APH? I came on because I wasn't sure if there were going to be tours or how um, that was all going to be handled. Yes. Like so today, this is just today and tomorrow, the open hall is kind of a session for you to ask any questions that you have. Um, we will, um, at four o'clock today, Karen Pope is going to come in and do a presentation on the Hopadot mat, one of our new um, products. And um, then we just found out that Tyler Marin, our um, uh, keynote speaker, he was just in here and because people were having trouble getting in the room, he is going to come back tomorrow at noon if anybody wants to have a chance to talk to him. That's awesome. Yep. So we, Paul and I had a great conversation with him. It was great. We got a little one-on-one. -on -one yeah, time. we got like 30 minutes with him, which was great. Oh, he was just so engaging. He was amazing. So where, now where are you based? Boston. Oh, wow. So starting to turn quite, quite fallish. Someone said this morning in one of the sessions that they just got out of a hundred degree heat wave. And I was like, I'll take it. <laughs> <laughs> Knowing what's ahead, I'll take it. <laughs> hmm. I'm in Chattanooga. We're kind of in that really nice time where it's, cooler in the morning a little bit warmer in the afternoon but not too warm so I'm, I'm loving it that's awesome joanna did you do any work with the signal center down in uh down in chattanooga i have i have worked with them and but i work for the school system itself right now okay 
but we do collaborate, so. Yeah. Yeah, it's been a little while uh, since I've been down in that direction, but they've got a really top-notch technical program they do. that is there with some really knowledgeable individuals. Ezra, if I'm not mistaken, I think was one of the people that I had worked with. I think I, I think I have that name correct. I, I'm new to them, so I, I know faces more than I know names, yeah. but... So did you guys have any questions that we could answer about any, any APH products? Or could we tell you anything about any APH? You can tell me about any products you want to. <laughs> okay. Well, Especially so, anything new. All right, so I'm assuming that you guys are both itinerant TVIs, is that correct? Or am I? I'm TVI slash comms, more comms than TVI. More comms than TVI. Okay, Marianne, how about you? Ma me and I work for Mass Commission for the Blind and former oh. TVI for 16 years is itinerant, yeah. Okay, so you know John Olivaro then. Oh, he's my boss. Is he? <laughs> <laughs> excellent, excellent, okay. Well, you know, obviously on the, on the high tech front, the Chameleon 20, the Mantis Q40, the Pix Blaster and the Page Blaster are, are four new high tech solutions that have been rolled out over uh, starting in March of last year. The team has been working really, really hard. So to what extent do you guys have Braille readers or are you concerned about Braille readers in your prospective areas? I currently actually do not have any total Braille readers. I have several that are learning Braille, but none that read it. Okay. And now those ones that are learning Braille that aren't reading it, are they little ones uh, or are they going to be a little bit older that are maybe dual media? I have um, my youngest one is first grade okay, and so I yeah. have them all the way up to, I have a high schooler, 12th grade, okay. um, multi-handicap that's learning, totally blind, but doesn't read. Okay. Doesn't read. Okay, no. so you've got some challenges. And Mayanne, how about how about I have you? a dozen that are in the fourteen to twenty-two category, and they are proficient Braille readers. Correct. Okay, great. So, so I think Mayanne, one of the things that we would encourage you to take a look at, obviously, would be the Mantis Q40. Uh, the the product uh, is, um, and I think did we drop the link to the I'm brochure? I am doing that right now. You go, girl. <laughs> so, I meant so to Mantis, do that earlier, but yeah, the Mantis uh, the Mantis Q40 has a has a QWERTY uh, input keyboard, and can really sort of serve as two functions. It has some internal intelligence, so the students would be able to use it to take a note. At at that age, they may do a little bit of calculating with the calculator. At that age, they really could be impacted by the power of the, the book reading client. So the device has Wi-Fi that's built into it in a few ways in which they can transfer information with external media and the ability to be able to unpack books out of Bookshare. So for, for that particular group of kids that you're working with, Mayan, it becomes a 40 cell refreshable braille display with a QWERTY input keyboard that they could use to take some notes and then move to reading a book and then move back to taking notes and organizing some files. So that's, that's like if we put like in one bucket. The other bucket is, is it using it as a refreshable Braille terminal with a smart device or a PC or a Mac. And there with those, those older Braille readers that you have, the, the power of the device and the impact it can have on their educational experience then just explodes depending on what it is that they're doing. So you know, if, they're, if they're working in an LMS, like a Google Classroom, for instance, or they are working with an application and getting familiar with something like a Microsoft Excel or some of the Microsoft Suite, they can use the device with a screen reading tool and uh, they've got those 40 cells and they've got that ability to be able to, to be able to do that 40 input. And then, Available through quota funds? Yes. Yeah, available through quota funds. Yeah. So uh, uh, 1995 with quota funds and 2495 without quota funds. 
And I just put two links in the chat. The second link is the Mantis brochure. The first link is a brochure that we put together that has information about several new APH products. And in that brochure, you're linked to the product page. So the first page of that brochure is the Mantis, and then it has some of the other products in it as well. Very cool. Yeah. So the other thing then to keep in mind about the, the other device, which is the Chameleon, that has a QWERTY input, or excuse me, a Braille input keyboard and has 20 cells. It too is a quota product. It has some of the same exact functionality as the Mantis, i.e. taking notes, doing some simple calculations and reading books. And then at the same time, you can connect it with other devices like a PC, a Mac or a smart device. And uh, uh, well, um, jo Joanna, like for instance, if you had that little first grader that you were working with, you could utilize it in order to be one of those tools that you might use in teaching the Braille code, right? You have okay. the ability to be able to, to write in contractor and contracted Braille. You have the refreshable Braille output. While it does not have speech now, it will have speech shortly. And I will say, May Ann, the Mantis does not have external speech. Okay. The chameleon will, and uh, a little bit later on in the month, we're going to do a little session on how something like the chameleon can be paired with like an iPhone or an iPad to be used with an app like the Braille Buzz, which the Braille Buzz app is meant to teach a little one how to uh, write the Braille code, giving them a phonetic uh, output, you know, for phonics and, and saying sounds as well as letters. So they're, they're hearing they're feeling and they're writing, they're putting all of those components uh, together in that writing process. So, so I think we've got a few other people. We've got Becca and, um, well, Yevi, do I have that correct? Am I saying Y-V-I, Paul? How, how'd, how'd my pronunciation go there? Um, I don't know, we'll have to let them tell you. Failure. <laughs> uh, so other solutions for your braille readers could include our Pix Blaster and our Page Blaster for uh, producing Braille as well as uh, tactile graphics. And those products are in partnership with View Plus uh, as well as Humanware. They've been, um, they've been popular. Uh, the first time that you've got Braille embossers that are available through APH with quota resources. So we want to keep, the, keep those in mind. All right, team, what else do we want to tell these guys about? Got a good question in the chat about payment plans for Mantis. Oh, yeah. So I'll, I'll, I'll take that one on. So as far as payment plans for the Mantis, uh, we, we do not have any kind of payment plan. We would encourage you to utilize a credit card that you might qualify for, and you'd be able, obviously, to pay down the cost of the Mantis which uh, not on quota is twenty four ninety five, so I guess right in the 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 neighborhood of a used car, huh, Paul? Not too much. I mean, <laughs> my early days of it uh, depends. <laughs> uh, but uh, but uh, the other thing that we might suggest that you do is investigate the Tech Act program in whatever state that you're from for any possible access to any kind of low interest loans that that tech act might provide to you. And I know every state is a little bit different and those tech act programs and those low interest loans can have a different degree of accessibility. So. There are some states too that even do a half and half where yeah. they will pay half of the cost and you pay the other half. And that's, that's definitely gonna vary, but I, I know those do exist. So, man, I'm going to pick on you a little bit since you've got some some older students. And as you uh, peruse down through our brochure, one of the things that I would encourage you all to consider is our, our APH we'll Connect be Center. be back in just a moment. Okay. And three services. Uh, one is Vision Aware, one is Family Connect, and the other is Career Connect. And... Uh, I, I call your attention specifically with those high school age students that you have in Career Connect for any kind of transitional activities that you do. I'm a career counselor by training and Jay Leventhal from AFB once upon a time was one of my best friends. I, and I say that because every summer I would call him with the names of about 14 kids that all wanted to be DJs. 
This, and this was like in the early 90s. Yes, Joanna, you're laughing. You know exactly what I'm talking about. Um, what's your career goal? I want to be a DJ. All right, well, let's check that out. Let's call a few of them. But anyway, uh, each one of those Vision Aware, Family Connect, and Career Connect are individual websites that you can access from the APH uh, main page. And there you'll find different resources that you could utilize in some of those uh, transition types activities that you might be doing. Now, the other thing, again, that would apply too is obviously Family Connect for those of you who are working with younger students who have parents that are looking for resources as well. So it too is an individual website and then uh, Vision Aware is for, for older adults and their children to learn and to find out more about services as they become an individual with some sort of visual impairment later on in life. So uh, the APH Connect Center is definitely something that- I know they were under reconstruction. Are they back up and running? Yeah, they're all set up. They are, yeah. And Olaya has been speaking at some of the sessions, our new um, director of the Connect Center. So okay. yeah, we're, we're, uh, we've kind of um, added to the staff and um, are really focusing on content. We've got those sites up and running from those static sites to, to um, active sites. So yeah. That's amazing. That's <laughs> such a big help for us. You know, I mean, any mentorships, any internships, any of that stuff, always looking for help with that, especially in a COVID world. Yeah, and one thing that we're really trying to get the word out about is there is a Connect Center Hub calendar that any organization can post about events that they're holding. So if there are career fairs, if there are conferences, if there's anything like that, we, we try to watch what organizations are doing and post it on there. And so we're trying to get the word out about that. But I know Career Connect is a real special focus for us because that out of all three of the sites really kind of um, didn't have a lot of new content being put out there. So they've just reworked the job um, seekers toolkit and we're really uh, Richard Ruda. I don't know if you know him, but out of California is working with that team and is going to really be doing a special focus on career connecting, getting some additional content out there. So if you have any suggestions, please let us know because we're always wanting, you know, looking for what folks need. So great. All right, so I'll do I'll do a, I'll do another shout out. Leslie, you can shut me up here if you need to. But <laughs> the other thing that we would really encourage you guys to do is check out some of the apps and games that uh, the team has been been working on. Mm -hmm. uh, over the course of the summer, I, I had the privilege of participating in a few webinars with one of our one of our um, product testers, uh, software. Uh, what what is Joe's title? Software quality assurance analyst. I think. Thank you, Paul. And I got well, a window into some of the apps that we've developed for the iPhone, for the iPad, and then even for, for the PC. So be aware that Talking Typer is, is, there is now a version of Talking Typer for Windows. It is a web-based application that you would be able to access on your PC or your Mac for that matter, right? Because it's web-based or is it, actually, you know what, Paul, can you correct me? Is it talking type uh, Windows? It's, I thought it was browser based. I thought it was browser based too. Hold on. But I talking wanna... typer? Yeah, I mean, it, it's, it will work it... with any browser, but then they also have one that is Just iOS. Just typer. Typer. Typer yeah. for? Windows. Typer online. So typer, typer online, yeah. online is the one that's web based. Yeah, there you go. Uh, so a great tool that's free that you could utilize, encourage kids, especially in this time of, rem of remote or distance learning to build their, their typing skills. There, uh, there are also several apps for, for math and specifically one for fractions, which always puts uh, like a chill through me because fractions was never anything and still to this day is not something that I can do very effectively. But uh, we encourage you to check out some of those those tools for, for typing as well as for, for math. And then in addition to that, the new CodeQuest app, which is for little ones and introducing the idea of what coding is, uh, which would segue nicely into a tool uh, that you guys might be familiar with called CodeJumper, 
which we can tell you a little bit about. But then we also did a little segment on the, on the web-based crossword puzzle that we have as well, which is, is something that, and actually we saw a spike in people accessing during this time of being at home a lot. So I, I dropped in the chat the link to the apps directly so you can check those out. Again, many of them are free. If they're not free, the cost of them often is, is not really all that high. So they should be pretty accessible. I believe if there are costs associated with some of them, they, they can be acquired with quota funds, if I'm not mm -hmm. mistaken. Not, and Nuffley's nodding her head. So do yeah. take some time to check out some of the apps. Too. Did you mention the Braille Buzz app? I mentioned it a little bit in conjunction okay. with the chameleon, but if you wanted to go no, into a little bit more. So I don't know if you, you all are familiar with our Braille Buzz, the little uh, B-shaped um, tool that, that is to teach kids, you know, the, the early stages of, of learning their Braille keystrokes. Well, we have now created that as an app. So on a refreshable Braille device, they can get that same practice. Um, and that is one of the free apps we have um, as well. And I think it's available on both Windows or uh, iTunes or shoot, Apple and uh, Android. So. Thank, thank you, you for, for all thank this. You. I, I signed up for the 2.30, so I got to run. But thank Good. you very much. Okay. You're welcome. I have a 2.30 as well, but hopefully I'll be back. All right, all right. Thanks. Thanks for joining us. Hey, C. Midor. Uh, it is... Who let him in here? <laughs> oh wait that was me what su what session is he a, doing uh, right Day. now oh so much amy amy is his his host oh, amy's okay, his good. yeah okay i'm just checking your session out see what's going on in here we're rocking in here man yeah we we had a little snafu with the wrong link but once we got the link fixed we've had a few people that just left for the 230 session but we've been sharing information about new products and Very cool. um kind of like the bow tie people. by the way oh thank you i've, yeah. I've since discarded it but uh <laughs> put it on there for for the for the it's kind of the, kind of the thing every year at a, annual meeting is new bow ties and uh, so i had to do it one more time this year so yeah. So we do have Richard's iPad here with us. So Richard, you are more than welcome to uh, unmute yourself and introduce yourself. Uh, I'm Jim Sullivan, and uh, we have uh, El Presidente, uh, <laughs> Craig Meter, with us. <laughs> yeah. Until the wind blows, and then I'll be bouncing out to another session. Uh, as well as uh, a couple of other team members, uh, Leslie Farnox and Paul Farrar. So if you've got any questions, uh, or you'd like to hear about any of uh, uh, our solutions or what we're up to uh, in 2020 and 2021, feel free to unmute or drop something in the chat. Craig, Sarah, and I really loved your state of the company. We were listening to it up here in dot six together. Oh, thank you. Yeah. yeah. We'd better during rehearsal, so. Always does. Yeah, it always it always feels that way anyway. <laughs> so have you had a moment to to breathe? I mean, over the the I mean, this is like packed tight. It's like from one thing to the next. It's you know our our timing for jumping between sessions has been tighter than than I mean that's probably one takeaway is we need to give ourselves virtually because like when we do a regular conference, there's usually 15 minutes passing. Right. And uh, I almost think we need to allow us that same 15 minutes between sessions. I've been late to several because I just coming off one that's ending late and then jumping into another one that's just beginning. And, uh, and you sort of like, as soon as the moderator says, and the closing code, you just have you, to click. You need to click and get out of there. Yeah. And then run to the next one. So, um, but yeah, usually annual meeting is, is a complete physical, an emotional drain but it's and then of course then we're staying up way too late at night and mm -hmm. probably drinking a little more than we should and definitely eating more than we should so yeah it uh but it's fun i mean i so miss it so miss seeing everybody and 
just connecting with folks this year. It's, uh, I mean, still good to connect. And I think people have been very, I've heard several comments from all around the country. People are just excited to be able to virtually see each other and talk to each other. And, and uh, so, so it, it's good. It is, it's been good for folks. They, they need to come up with a, uh, a virtual hallway for the virtual meeting. Where you can actually, your avatar- Bump into people? Yeah. They're walking down it. <laughs> right. <laughs> Yeah. That would be a good way to do it. I mean, it's just like. I thought mentioned that little trick that, because uh, I think those, uh, Sully and appreciate that Air was doing. What's that? In Leslie's breakout room last night when we had the little social gathering. Okay. I think his name was Rob Hare, and he was doing something on Zoom where he could make it look like somebody was in another spot. So, oh yeah, yeah. So, uh, he Robert Hare was doing a screenshot of Mike Wood and then putting it as his virtual background and like <laughs> petting Mike's head. <laughs> he was putting his arm around him. And he's like, yeah, this is what I've learned after hours of being on Zoom rooms, how to take a picture of somebody else and make them your virtual background. <laughs> and Mike couldn't see him because he was on a different screen. So everybody's laughing and Mike's like, what's so funny? And then he flips over and he's like, hey, quit rubbing my head. <laughs> Yeah, that right. was uh, that was fun. I thought Laura and Leanne did a good job. They did. I mean, we were all I, we were all sorts of nervous yesterday. We we're like, "How's this going to work? I don't know. Will anyone stay around?" Or and you know, we did. We I think we by the time with thirty minutes ago, there's probably about thirty people left or so. But that was good. Yeah. Will do, Will tonight's reception be similar? Do you know? Shorter, uh, but probably somewhat similar. Okay. Somewhat similar. I don't know if we'll do games or not, but um, there may be some of that. I think it was good just having a chance to to connect and talk with people. In my group, we had several APH people, so it's like well, I know all you people. But yeah. there, there were two new people I had never met before. Yeah. So. In my group, it was just Jessica and I, Jessica Minacci and I, and then the rest were EOTs and a few of them and Mike. A few of them I knew, but there were a few people whose names I knew, but I had never had a chance to mm -hmm. meet them. So that was really nice. Yeah. Well, I'm going to leave you guys here. Not that I don't enjoy the company. I do, but I need to bounce out and see what's going on in the other rooms. And it's kind of what I've been doing today is bouncing between different offerings. Well, thanks for stopping well, by. Well, thanks for popping by. Yeah. Carry on. All right. Hey, Jen, it's Leslie Knox. How are you? Hi. Good. There's Hi. nobody else here. I, I thought nope. I was just checking it out. Hi. Hi, Paul. Hi. <laughs> Yeah, Paul. Yeah, we've had some people in here. Um, I think once the session lets out, we may have some more folks in here. We had some mm -hmm. folks in between 2 and 2.30. Now, okay. Karen Pope at 4 is going to be doing a presentation on Hoppadot, Matt, in here. Okay. I don't know if you're... Uh, if you've got time, if you're not doing anything then and you want to pop back in. Otherwise, we're just kind of here to answer questions of people oh, okay. um, about any products. Oh, okay. No, no, I don't have any um, questions. I was checking out some things in between the break and seeing what this room was. Yeah. Um, so yeah, I just figured I'd drop in, but how are you all doing? We're doing good. How is everything in California? This is our first day where it's smoke free and oh, it's actually cool. We aren't like a hundred plus. So it's pretty wonderful right near your weather. That's right. Yeah. It's interesting. Finally. <laughs> Because I've got friends in California and then a friend up in Seattle and boy, it's oh, yeah. just taught. We were trying to do a webinar with them and they were both just choking so badly, even though they were in their house because yep. of the air. We've had a couple days like that. In fact, one of our, um, our registered students, we just found out lost their home in one of the recent fires. So, oh, no. yeah, 
Um, they're okay. They didn't get out. <laughs> we had their favorite products though. That I was like, you know what? We're going to cover those and replace those. But yeah, wow. it's always sad when you hear about a person and there's more of a connection than just seeing it on the news. Yeah. Well, that's tough. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Well, I guess um, I'm just going to keep popping around then. Please feel free. Yeah. How do you like this virtual format? Um, so far, so good. You know, my my only complaint would be the time zone. Yeah. Um, and have like on, on Crowd Compass, which I really like Crowd Compass, but putting the different time zones there so we can see would be helpful. Yeah. <laughs> and That's then some of the, the really early sessions, there's just no way I can do it. So yeah. But overall, I think the format's working pretty well, given our circumstances. Yeah, I, I, I think it is too. That's so funny. I'm going to share that comment with Leanne because we just had somebody from the central time zone that was saying that, mm -hmm. that there, that she felt like she had missed all the sessions this morning because she just, she was having trouble with the time zones and the times yeah. that we had, so... Yeah, I mean, this is one of those things you learn as you go. It's not like, you know, you can figure it out and you know, we're all usually there, so it's not an issue. We, right, right. But yeah, you know, things you figure out. But no, it sounds good. Okay, well, it's good to see you. Okay, bye, Leslie. Bye, all Paul. Right. Bye. bye. Take care. You too. Hi, Melanie. How are you? I'm well. How are you? Good. I'm Leslie. I'm part of the APH team. I'm here with Paul Ferrara, who's also part of the APH team. Nice and to meet we're, you. We're just answering any questions people have or pointing you in the direction of resources you need. Okay. Well, I have two. So my first question is, I just finished the session, the APH session, the customer, customer experience, but they did not give a closing code. So I'm wondering how I would go about getting that closing. Oops. Hold on one second. Or if they did, they didn't put it in the Who chat. Who was the box. moderator in there? I can maybe go into the files. That's a good question. I can't. I didn't write down names. Um, it was it was a man though. Um, uh, Mark. J Jim. Oh, was it Jim? Oh, Jim Kreiner. Jim yeah, Kreiner. okay. Let me think who's. I need to find who was hosting that room. Let me look real quick. I tried to type it into the chat just at the end, and then they closed the meeting just before I got my chat sent. Hi, Gregory. How are you? Hold on, Melanie. Let me, let me find that for you. First, I've got to find the list of all the. We've got a great Teams channel, but my gosh, there's so many documents in it for this annual meeting. So I just need to find the. And I'm looking at everything that says Zoom because one of them lists the host. And once I find the host, I can go back in and find um, what your that information for you. So okay, let's see. Thursday was two thirty. Customer said so it was Kristen. Okay. So let me find Kristen's sheet. Did you get the opening code? I did, yes. Well, shoot, where are the codes? Oh, here we go. Okay. To the 2.30 session um, email. Okay. Email. And then my second question is, and I'm not sure you can help me on this one or not. Yesterday morning, there was an outreach meeting. They used APH was hosting, hosted the meeting mm -hmm. um, through Cosby and Cosby. I missed it. And I was wondering if there is a recorded session that will be available at any time. I don't know, but let me, I can find out and um, probably just message you through the app. I'm writing your name down. Okay. Um, so Posby and Cosby, 
I think that they set their own Zooms up. I would assume that they're, I mean, we're recording every session that we do. Let me message Leanne and I will ask her and okay. um, I can just message you through the app. I don't know if, if you're going to stay here. I'll, I'll let you know as soon as I hear from her. But if you're going to jump out to someplace else, I, I should be able to message you right through um, Crowd Compass. Okay, that'll be great. Thank you. Sure. Okay, have a nice day, you guys. Everything's going right. well. I think Thank you. Good, good. That's good to hear. Have a good day. Bye. Hey, Gregory, is there anything we can help you with? Do you have any questions or um, any products we can tell you about? Can you hear me now? Yes. Yes. Well, I was just kind of curious what the session was about. I had just gotten out of one on customer experience. I was just curious what this is about. Did, was there a meeting this year for the material centers? Um, not a separate meeting. A lot of times they will come to um, come to this session, but um, not that I'm aware of, Paul. Have you heard of anything? I have not. Yeah. Because I know that they usually have a little bit of a separate section. I didn't know, you know, like like the schools for the blind and stuff, and I didn't see it on the agenda. They usually have that the day before. Yeah, I think we kind of left it up to those other organizations if they still wanted to tie into this meeting. I see that POSBE and COSBE met. Those are the only related, um, those are the only related uh, the Keystone Library automated, automated system. Those are the meetings I see from yesterday that were yeah. the non-related meetings. Okay. Was that, um, I went to the assessment one that American Foundation for the Blind, the one that they did this afternoon, um, was it exactly the same? Do you know? It looked like it just had a different title <laughs> um you went to the one this afternoon or you i went to the one this morning at nine the one oh. that i just was wondering it was just a repeat without because i was battling between customer service and that one for the afternoon. I don't think there are any repeats today. No, right? well, there aren't any repeats today. And you said you had recordings? of. Yes, of so we'll be posting all of those. Give us, um, you know, we'll probably start with the general session and the keynote and things like that and then work our way through. But even this session we were recording in case there was anything in here we wanted to save. So we will be posting all of them and we will send information out to all the attendees about when they are posted. Okay. I have a technical, I have a technical question. I don't know if you can answer this. Um, you know, when people are chatting I'm a voiceover. I'm a, I'm a screen reader user. Uh -huh. And when people are chatting, I can't figure out how to turn the chat off. I tried a couple, couple techniques, but sometimes it's on my iPhone. It's on the it, iPhone. Unfortunately, there isn't a way to do it. Yeah, because it overrides the speaker because the speaker goes in the background for some reason. Yep. And usually when they... Way with the phone to do it, um, it's uh, annoying, but um, no way to... Audio ducking, I don't even know if that would help because that's external sounds. And voiceover, and it's voiceover, voiceover. So maybe you could try that. Turn audio ducking on in your uh, assembly voiceover. Uh, might even be in your rotor. 
to open up settings and search for audio ducking. Okay. But no, like I that's said, a, it, that's, it, it might be a help. It's, and usually when usually when they start their super chatting is right when they're saying something important. <laughs> <laughs> So, but anyway, I'll give that a shot, but um, I look forward to the recording of the national assessment um, video. Okay, yeah, watch, we will send updates out to everybody once we get those um, posted on the, on the website. Okay, well, thank you. Thank you for coming by. Yep, take care. You I'm too. gonna take my break to my ex official meeting. <laughs> good, good. Well, you deserve a little a little rest, it sounds like. I know you've probably been going all day, so. But yeah, I'm kind of bouncing between here and, and work activities, like probably everyone. Yeah. Take care. You too. So I see Bye. we have a few other people that have joined us in the open hall. Um, we're here just to answer questions that you might have or point you in the right direction if you're looking for any um, information. Can we help you with anything? You might need to unmute because I think it mutes you automatically when you come in. So you may need to unmute if you're trying to ask uh, Paul or I a question. We will have Karen Pope, one of our project leaders in the information fair at four o'clock today. She'll be presenting on a brand new, um, a new product from APH called Hopadot Map. So she'll actually be presenting um, in about 25 minutes. So if anybody's interested in that, otherwise we're here just answering questions you might have about APH products. I will put, um, one link in the chat. We've put together a brochure of um, some of our newer products, some of our most popular products, and that's an accessible PDF you can download. So I'm putting that information in the chat right now in case anybody wants to um, take a look at that. Otherwise, uh, feel free to ask us any questions you have. Has everybody been enjoying the meeting so far, this virtual format? Is anybody a first time attendee at APH's meeting this year? Hi, Lewis. So again, we're here, the open hall is just a time for you to ask any questions you have about APH products or um, let us help you kind of find resources that you're looking for. Um, so if you have any questions, please free, feel free to unmute your mic and ask away. This does, it is muting people for some reason when they come into the, into the room. So you do need to unmute yourself. 
in order for us to be able to hear you. You can always put something in the chat also. That's true, yeah. And I just, for those of you that are new, I put something in the chat. It is a link to an accessible PDF that we have put together that highlights some of the newer products that we've rolled out, some of our more popular products, um, everything from assistive technology to some of our adapted um, educational products to um, information on apps and games that we have. So uh, feel free to take a look at that. Um, Anytime. This is Miriam Dixon. I'm the Braille teacher at the Career and Training Center in Raleigh, North Carolina. And uh, my ex officio is uh, Marie Pichon Leach. And she and I have done a lot of talking, and I'm really interested in having an adult section separate from everything. It's hard for me to find the braille products that I need for my classes because I have to jump all around in the catalog. Mm. Um, if there was an adult section with, or a braille section with just the braille products, it would make my job a lot easier. Okay. And the, and the other suggestion is I'm putting, I'm putting together an idea for a braille kit for the beginners that it's a little different from the kit that's available but although I like the abacus of very very much and I was hired as an abacus teacher uh, it's not used much anymore so it just doesn't need to be in that kit people don't even know what it is um, perhaps maybe there could be a kit separate for math um, and just have a kit for braille Okay. Well, we will we'll make a note of those suggestions. We haven't started working on our next catalog yet, so we can absolutely share that suggestion um, with the team that works on that. And when you talk about Braille section, are you talking about more um, kind of refreshable Braille type products? From, from the slate and stylus to the refreshable Braille. The okay. whole room. Because I teach beginning. You like a literacy section. Mm -hmm. yeah, literacy section for adults. There's so much emphasis on children that I don't mm -hmm. want the newly blind adults to be forgotten. Right. And I'm, I'm, I promote, I love the refreshable brails displays and note takers and all, don't get me wrong, but I, I'm a strong advocate of the slate and stylus. So I would like a section with the slate and stylus and the paper and, and it's just a whole lot more easier to, to, to get around than the present catalog. I find it very difficult. Okay. I know, speaking of the catalog, one thing that, that and I don't know, somebody may have mentioned this because I've popped in and out a couple of times. Um, on the website, I wish there was better pictures, pictures and descriptions on the website. Because there's times where I'm, I'm trying to figure out if something comes in a kit or not, and it doesn't say in the description. And when you go to um, the picture, sometimes I have to enlarge the picture so much it gets blurry just trying to see what all is in it. And I know it's because being a sighted person, I'm very visual, but that would help me out. Okay. Hello, this is Linda. Um, I have a question about a prototype that was um, done back in 2019, and we haven't seen it come out yet. So we were wondering if that's going to be coming out. It's the texture graphic art tape. I just joined right in time. I was going to say, Karen, <laughs> yay! <laughs> yeah, that's, that's actually right here in my room with me. Um, we are working on what we call the tooling. So in production, we ha have like the vacuum form patterns ready and the die cuts, the die cut patterns ready. I'm working on the final documentation and we'll, and we'll go into Braille translation of that. But it's definitely active and it's on my 
everyday things to do. So um, it, it will probably definitely, well, I know it will go into the next calendar year before avail availability, but it's certainly something I'm working every day on. And like I said, the production tooling is probably the heftiest, hardest part to do, but they um, had that pretty much tackled. So essentially, I'm sort of the person they're waiting on. As soon as I get the um, suggested usage sheet updated with photos that reflect some of the possible uses in the final content, we'll get that ushered off um, for Braille translation. And then what happens is once we get that tooling finalized, we have an in-house meeting where we essentially we build a specifications document that's turned over um, and presented formally to our production staff. And, and then they make scheduling you know, in terms of everything else going on in, in, in terms of other projects. So it's not forgotten and it's certainly something I'm working on every day. So it's actually called now, um, we came up with a new name for it. Um, it's Sensible Strips uh, Stick on Tactile Lines. So we went away from more of the generic texture graphic art tape because we already have graphic art tape that's available in three different widths. Um, so I don't know if that answered your question or not. Yes, it does because uh, my kit is almost gone, so I'm ready for the new I was, one now. <laughs> I was just thinking the same thing. I'm, I'm, I'm using my last pieces that I when I because I I was on the prototype field testing team, and uh -huh. now I'm doing orientation and mobility full time. And there's so yeah. many times I've got, oh, I wish I had some more of this, or oh, I wish I still had some of this. Yeah, if uh, let's hold on for just a minute. <laughs> Uh, just to give you an example, I have it right here of how things are die cut. Um, so these, for instance, if you remember, if you field tested, um, you know how there were border strips mm -hmm. with different uh, edges. So these would come to you, and you would could just simply pull these out. Oh, cool. Okay. Does that does cool. that look okay? And so we have now sort of the dub the double scalloped, um, what I call the it's a crenulated, kind of crenulated um, castle wall look. Um, and then the single scalloped. People uh, in field testing, and you might have been one of the ones that mentioned this, the hexagonal border strips and the double scallops are easily confused. So mm -hmm. um, that's why we forfeited the hexagon, hexagonal one and then did sort of just the single scalloped. Um, and then we have this double fill tooth. Well, that's a single saw tube. And this is the double. So all those come in different colors, like red, blue, green, black. Um, we also have all the translucent strips, railroad line, dotted, dashed, and then the textured strips, which is um, a smooth, a soft uh, flock styrene, and the bumpy and rough. So we have a pretty eclectic um, assortment. The only thing I, that was in the prototype that I've decided, well, not I, we decided that was not um, as beneficial were those uh, commercially available rolls of graphic art tape that have a real low profile when you put it on it. Mm -hmm. It wasn't as discernible actually for kids. Plus those are commercially available. So essentially what goes in the kit is completely homegrown at APH completely. So um, hopefully in the future, we won't have any kind of procurement issues with, with materials because we make it. Um, so, What did y'all decide on the case? On the, How it was going to be packaged? Okay, well, it was snug, right? <laughs> For the fill testing, there's a lot in there. So we're going to a, I thought I had it with me. Um, um, if you're, I don't have it in this room. It's a blue box. We use it for other products that it's pretty deep. It's a carrying case, but we're going to split it up. So when you get the kit, it will actually be two of those boxes to give a lot of um, some just a roomier kind of feel to it. So if you wanted to add some things into the boxes or, um, but each type of strip will be sorted into its own and I might have, you can hold on for just a minute, I might have that here. So I don't know if you can see these, but they're little Ziploc bags. Okay. So each type of strip would be, and these are the little arrow, directional arrow strips. I don't know if you can see those or not. Okay. 
Okay. So that's, we're going to try to make it or, more organized that way for you. Um, now these, those will come in sheets and you just easily take those out. Yeah. But uh, all the other ones will be clean cut and put into the black bags. Awesome. Okay. And thanks for your old self fill testing. Appreciate oh, that. It's, it's, I can't wait for it to come out. It's going to be wonderful. Thanks. It's nice to hear firsthand that it's useful. So thank you. So for those of you that just joined us, this is kind of an open hall session where we're here to answer any questions that you have. Um, we have a link in the chat to a brochure we put together that features some of our newer products and some of our more popular products that you can absolutely take a look at. And we have Karen Pope, one of our project leaders with us. She is going to be starting to talk about Hopadot Matt here in a few minutes. Um, but if you have any questions about products or anything that Paul and I can help you with, or Karen, um, please feel free to, uh, to ask us. You may need to unmute. Um, our rooms are muting you when you first come in. So you may need to unmute or drop your question in the chat. And we'd be more than glad to help you with anything. anything. Leslie, can you put the, the link for the brochure in the chat again? Because when you come into the room, it's an empty chat box. I will. Thank you. I'm going to say that might be the case. I wasn't sure. Leslie and Paul, how many are in this room at this time? I don't know if I can tell. There are nine people. In nine, room. including three of us. Yeah. Oh, okay. Thanks. So I, I just put the brochure back in the chat. It has information on our new embossers, um, our Mantis Q40, um, keyboard and Braille display, the chameleon, and the nice thing in each of the write-ups, there is a link to the page on the APH website where you can learn more. Um, we have Hopadot Matt in here too, so Karen will be talking about that, and you can, well, I'll drop the link to the page um, for that product in the chat as well, so you can go directly there if you'd like it. Okay, and so now this is the hot, oops. Uh, Leslie, will I be able to share a PowerPoint? Yes, I'll make you a co-host. Okay. So the, the link that I just shared is, um, there you go, Karen, now you should have control. So okay. that I just below the, um, the, uh, I can't talk today. Below the link to the brochure with multiple products. It's a long day. Is the link to the Hopadot Matt brochure. <laughs> yeah. And then I'll just drop this in too in case anyone wants it. We have an annual meeting page for the first time on our uh, website. So on this page, all of the brochures from all of the info fairs tomorrow, any product we've talked about, you have a link to the, PDF, the accessible PDF of the brochure on the link I just sent you to the annual meeting page. We will leave that up for a while. And if you search annual meeting in the search bar on our website, it will take you to this page. But we have links to all the um, PowerPoint presentations that have been used. Uh, that will be used throughout the week. And below that, we have a list of all the product brochures listed and this, the open hall brochure is in there too, so. Wow. So you should be able to find a lot of different things on that page. Leslie, did this particular session get like broadcast very well or do you know how they? Um, it, the issue that we had, and I have sent something out, was there was an incorrect link put in initially today, so okay. they have fixed that. I have messaged all attendees, they've messaged all attendees. We did do a notification for your okay. presentation, uh -huh. so hopefully we'll get some folks dropping okay. in.
And I'm excited to learn about the Hoppa.Mac because I <laughs> I've just heard a little bit about it. I haven't been at a conference where we've just, where we've um, exhibited it. So yeah, it's pretty self-explanatory, but it might be new to a lot of folks. So. It's always nice to see it in action, though. Well, as much as I can do from. from <laughs> <laughs> That's why I brought my PowerPoint. It's like okay. I can stop them. <laughs> so. I should have thought ahead, had a video made or something. Yeah, like your uh, tactile doodle, doodle video that yeah. was bringing people in by droves at yeah. some of the sessions. Yeah, I should ask Matt over for the weekend. Maybe he can demonstrate the Hobbit. <laughs> <laughs> we keep a safe distance from during the COVID thing. I'm going to put, I'm going to do another message real quick, just in case anybody missed the earlier one. I see all my past field test evaluators. That's pretty cool. <laughs> <laughs> I've done a lot of field testing over the years for us. And then we'll continue to just let people in as they as they come in. So, um, for those of you that just joined, Aaron and um, Lewis, where Karen is going to be presenting on the Hoppa Dot Match Mat shortly. Um, in the meantime, if you have questions about any other APH products, you can feel free to um, reach out to us. And I'm going to put a couple links in the chat. One, two. Um, a brochure that has information on a lot of new products that we have launched. And then the Hoppa Dot Mat. And then the last one is just to a page that we have that's everything about the annual meeting. So this link will have all of the sessions have been recorded and we'll be sharing um, those presentations. Um, they're available right now actually out at that link along with the brochures that everyone will be presenting um, products about in the open hall tomorrow. So is this anybody's first time to the annual meeting? Mm -hmm. are, you all, are you all uh pros at this? No. First time? <laughs> because it's virtual, you were able to attend. Is that it? Yes, ma'am. Yeah. All right. Yeah. We have thirteen hundred people. It's amazing. So that's uh that's one thing I found has been a uh added benefit, I guess, of the uh COVID is all the virtual stuff it's so much easier to attend you know all these trainings and right. webinars and things especially for you know tvis and o and m's we're so few and far between that we usually have to travel a distance to get to anything so mm -hmm. well leanne has been saying so leanne who, who now plans our meeting has been saying i'm glad we did this virtually the hotel couldn't hold everybody <laughs> We were looking at the numbers of people that were in some of the breakout sessions this last time. We had, uh, you know, 100 people, 80 people. That's unusual for um, for us. It's four o'clock, three o'clock on a on an afternoon. A lot of times, conferences start clearing out, so it's great that everybody's. Um, well, I've really enjoyed it. 
That's okay. great. And we've got some more extra, some more people coming in, Karen. Oh, wow. Okay. Yeah. I thought we were going to have a really small group here. Yeah. Well, so for those awesome. of you that are just joining us, Karen's going to be starting her Hopadot mat um, presentation shortly. And I am putting into the chat um, a link that we have to an annual meeting page on the APH side site that has not only <laughs> all of the um, PowerPoint presentations that you've been seeing all week, but it also has links to the PDFs of all of the brochures um, of the products our team is presenting this week. So um, this is your one-stop shop. The Hopadot mat is on there. We have our open hall um, brochure that's a combination of a lot of products and several other products listed, but you can also get right to all the session PowerPoints from that link I just put in the chat. And if anybody has any other questions, Paul and I are here to help you with that. And you may need to unmute because Zoom is set up to automatically mute you when you enter a room, so, or drop it in the chat. I can't see this other person. So Leslie, will they be, if I ask a question, will they be able to just talk to me directly? Yes, yeah, so you can unmute yourself um, to ask Karen a question. Okay. Um, since this is a meeting room, not a webinar room, we don't have the raise your hand thing, but I will, Paul and I will watch the chat. So if you're more comfortable typing your question into the chat, feel free to do that and we will ask Karen for you. And then this session is also be, being recorded, so we'll um, edit out some of the times, but we will have this part, this presentation that will also be available with every, all the other Zoom calls that we will be, or all the other Zoom meetings that we will be posting, probably out on our YouTube page with a link on this page. Um, that's probably going to take us a couple weeks, so give us, have some patience with us there because we've got quite a few sessions to uh, download, but we will be uh, putting all of the Zoom sessions online for you to be able to see later, too. Agreed, Lewis. Agreed, we do. Do you want me to begin, Leslie? Yeah, or? I think you're good. Yeah, and everybody that's saying we miss in person, we miss in person too. There's nothing, uh, there's nothing like seeing people face to face, but I guess this is the next best thing. So yeah, Karen, go ahead and we'll continue okay. to let people in and monitor okay. the chat. Well, thanks for this opportunity. I, I kind of like this more relaxed kind of um, presentation. And so feel free to interrupt me, ask me questions along the way. Um, Hopadot Matt, I think it came out oh, around November, December 2019. So I'm not even sure if any of you might even already uh, have it or have used it, but um, love to have feedback on that. It's a little difficult to actually show because it is so large. So I went ahead and created um, a PowerPoint and then I'll show that and kind of go through it pretty quickly and then come back and try to share the actual product as much as I can um, over Zoom. So um, let me see if I can get my PowerPoint up here for you. Okay, can you see that at all? Yes. Awesome, okay. Let me get it started. Upload. And again. Sorry, I'm getting used to this myself. Okay, so my name is Karen Pope and I've been with the printing house for a long time. I started working there in 1986. So I've seen a lot of changes and um, worked on a lot of fun projects that actually we've gotten to the point where things are, I'm actually saying <laughs> we need to modify some of those original projects. So it's been a journey and it's been a fun place to work. So um, in terms of the Hoppa dot mat, there's I put the Hoppa Dot Matt and Spinners together because they're all contained in the same kit. 
and I don't want to skip over my slide, um, but this is a, sort of a just a snapshot of one of the Hoppa dot mats assembled with a young boy kind of exploring the dots within the mat alongside a number braille print spinner. So I just have sort of the nuts and bolts information here for you. Um, the kit number, the catalog number is 1-08819-00. Um, the whole kit costs $229 and it is available on quota. Um, there is a number spinner, and this photo shows a better actual overview of all of the parts. Um, so the number spinner, it comes with the kit, but it's also available separately. So if you just want a number spinner, you can just buy that for $23. And the, num the cat number on that is 1-08818-00. And then the alphabet spinner, um, also in the kit, but also available separately on quota. And the catalog number is 1 08817 00 for $23. So just let me focus on, and I'll try to show these live after the PowerPoints uh, presentation here. Um, but it's this is a nice view where it's showing you get both a blue mat, um, it's a foam mat. Uh, the blue side is textured. And then the foam dots that are numbered there are smooth. And you can actually, and I, I might be able to show this on the, on the camera, the, the numbers, the print numbers are actually tactile as well. And then the braille numbers come on a, like a sticker sheet that you can apply to the separate um, dot, uh, dot disc. Um, those discs, which I'll show later too, because it's hard to tell by this photo, but they're elevated. They're, nearly double the thickness, the braille dots are nearly double the thickness of the mat itself. So if they're down on their knees and they're trying to find dot one, dot two, whatever, that will be elevated above the mat itself. So you get both the blue background with the yellow dots, the braille dots, and then you also get the red mat with the yellow dots. So you can do um, say you're working on numbers, you could dedicate one to your numeric indicator and then the other mat to the number. So you can do things like that. Also included um, are just some fun things like the Papa cells where they can go from the Papa cell to the Hoppa dot. Um, there's some bean bags for bean bag tossing games and there's some tactile dice. So it's a pretty big kit but fairly compact and I'll show you how um, conveniently it's stored for easy transport. Um, okay. So what is the purpose of the Hoppa dot mat? It's to encourage young students to learn the braille cell and braille alphabet through movement within a fun context. It provides opportunities for students to be physically active while learning important skills related to body awareness and spatial concepts, such as top, bottom, left, right, above, below, next to, between, all those good concepts. And it accommodates shared games and activities with sighted peers. So everything is, I noticed many of you have been field evaluators for us and we appreciate all that work because it is very, you know, it's a lot of effort to put into field testing and giving us feedback and waiting patiently till we make all the modifications and launching it. Um, so on this particular product, this map just shows where the field test sites were. We always try to get a good demographic spread of field test sites and representative um, instructional settings. So we have, for instance, here residential, itinerant, itinerant resource, combination of itinerant, re residential, and center-based preschool that were involved in the field test. I think it was 12 different sites com combined. Um, 32 students were involved in the field test. So I have this grouped by age. Um, the age was pretty broad um, and pretty evenly divided here. Three to five year olds accounted for 25%, six to eight year olds accounted for 25%, nine to 11 year olds accounted for 38%, and 13 to 16 year olds accounted for 12%. So you, you might be wondering like, why did an older group use this? It's, it's a very, I always used it, um, even recently for, for sighted folks who are just very new to Braille and you just wanna give them a really quick orientation to how the Braille cell is set up and that. So also there's some games that the older kids could probably enjoy partaking in. 
grade level, 19% um, preschool, 19% kindergarten, 28% grades one through three, 25% grades four through six, and 9% seven through nine. Um, they differed in primary reading medium. So we had a lot of um, mostly large print braille, dual readers, which could be auditory braille or large print braille. We had some pre braille readers, auditory to a lesser degree, print with ma magnification. Okay. So as you know, who, those who um, helped us out with field testing, we ask you very specific questions about as many features as we can list and expect you to be very candid in terms of how well they, they did. So here um, is the results of having them rate each product feature. So I was looking at just going down that chart there and the scores were pretty high. Um, overall size of the Hoppa dot, 67%. Um, quality, I'm sorry, quantity of provided Hoppa dot mats were two. Everybody liked that. Visual contrast of the blue Hoppa dot mat with the yellow foam dots, that was high, highly rated. I would have thought red with yellow would have done better, but, um, but still, it was still pretty well received. The size of numbers on the foam dots, well received. Ease of assembly, setup, linking squares, and inserting do foam dots, 92%, so that was well done. The storage style was easy to carry, durability, and portability. Portability is very just lightweight completely. Okay. Again, just stop me if you have any questions. I know I'm rambling through this pretty quickly. Um, student reactions. According to 92% of the field evaluators, the Hoppa dot mat enhanced students' in, in interest in Braille. And these were just quotes from um, the teachers. Um, he loved it, extremely motivating and engaging. The student enjoys playing games. She is very tactile and enjoyed a different approach to Braille. Since Braille is usually one-on-one -on -one with a teacher or working with one other student, it increased his, his excitement to have everyone in the class exploring Braille. He liked that it was a game that she could pl play better than others because she knows Braille and they don't. Greatly improved overall class interest in Braille in general. This was a great reward for work for completing work, and my students asked to play Hoppa Dot at the beginning of each class period. So we're always interested in making sure our products are very um, re well well received by sighted peers as well. So it helps with engaging them um, with their students, but well, encourage shared experiences between students with vision and those without. So half of the field evaluators indicated that sighted peers participated in the use of the Hoppa dot with their, stu with, with their students with visual impairments. Um, these were quotes. It started lots of conversations about Braille, about sharing with peers, how to explain Braille, how to explain visual impairment. They used the mats as much as their visually impaired friends playing right alongside them. They were interested in this active way to learn Braille. We put the Hoppa dot in the kindergarten classroom as a center. The sighted kids spun the spinner. The Braille student read the letter tactually, then made it with bean bags. The sighted children were able to use the Braille configuration on the spinner to tell if she had done it correctly or not. And then these were just general evaluator reactions. 100% of the field evaluators recommended that APH produce the Hoppa dot mat. Makes Braille fun and a social activity. The mat adds another dimension to Braille instruction that we haven't had before. Great reward motivator, supported learning of new Braille letters and contractions, works on cognitive and motor skills simultaneously. I liked how big it was when put together, but I especially liked the fact that it could be taken apart, which made it so much more portable. Held up well under some active, occasionally rough play. Students could do this, assemble the mat themselves with just a little verbal guidance and I thought the storage was very convenient. Sorry, it goes on some more here. Um, good proprioceptive practice and good spatial awareness practice. It included many pieces that can be used for a variety of activities. Class discussion of Braille was a strength of Hoppa Dot, portable, something different, moving the entire body, games that involved sighted peers. 
So they also alluded to other um, skills and concepts that were supported that were kind of echoed and referred to in, in the previous slides, but social interaction, um, self-expression, physical activity and exercise, body awareness and coordination, tactile discrimination, and understanding spatial concepts. In terms of ideal target populations, you can kind of scan through here, a lot to read, but it looks like looking at this chart that most, the most appropriate target populations for this kit would be, according to the evaluators, um, preschoolers who are blind and low vision, low vision students in, K, in grades K through two, tactile readers in grade through K through two is probably, well, 100% said it was appropriate for that age group, and then tactile readers in grades three through five. And then there's a sort of a smattering, but um, sight appears 50%. And sighted adults, 25%, which is good. So this one clarified sighted adults when playing with a visually impaired child or any new braille reader. So in the guidebook, which I'll show you in just a little bit, um, I just give lots of games and ideas for games and activities. It's not meant to be exhaustive. You can, and I'm sure, and I would love to hear how students are creating their own games or teachers are, are finding ways to use it in different ways. Um, I just kind of put some <laughs> starter ideas out there within the guidebook. So I'll go through these um, a little bit later, but, but some of the titles of them are build a cell, roll a dot, letter twist, roll a letter, spin a letter, pop a cell to hop a dot, beanbag braille, two cell brock, all feet on deck, Spell your name, brow ta ta, brow punch, puddle dots, build a number, and braille relay, braille bingo, and I can't have her name myself, Abril Cadabra. <laughs> I, was, I was getting kind of too creative there, I think. So, okay. Um, evaluator comments about the guide, the uh, activity guide, gave more ideas than I had thought of or on how to use the product, brief and to the point, just enough detail. The description of game rules and body movements were very well understood, attention grabbing, easy to read and understand. It has enough variety for most TBIs and leaves room for them to design their own activities, which is always our hope with any pro product that we put out there. We know that you probably use just a small percentage of the ideas we give in our guidebooks and you take it and apply it in much more creative ways. And we enjoy hearing about all that. So, uh, I'll come back to audience questions and ideas. I'm gonna turn this PowerPoint off and stop sharing for a minute here. Okay, and then what I'm going to try to do, probably clumsily, is try to show you the actual 3D, or I mean the actual components of the kit. So when I said it was lightweight, I didn't even unpack the red, the red hop -a dot with the yellow kits, but they come in this, these um, sort of pouches, these are pouches. So they're all contained within just this real lightweight carrying case. We take the squares apart and drop them in there along with the guidebook and so forth. Um, in terms of the actual um, mats, again, I can't build the whole six dot arrangement, but I'll give you this. They're each about 12 inches square. And then maybe if I can give you a side view, you can tell that when the dot disc are put into the mat, they are well elevated above that surface. This, this surface, if I can get close, it's sort of a really rough crosshatch texture, whereas um, the dot itself is smooth. The numbers here are, it, it's printed with our rolling printer, it's sort of deposited ink, so you can actually pick up, it feels rough against the smooth foam. The foam's very safe and washable, thank, good, thank goodness. Um, it's an EVA foam and it's very commonplace and used with kids. Um, and what I do is print, and everybody's probably familiar with these by now, it's in the field. We have these print braille stickers. And so I give a sheet of the, these are the UEB version of numbers and you can apply the number and you can just be very consistent where you put those stickers on the different um, tiles or disc. I've always put it towards the top there. So that's included um, with that. And then also, let's see, we have two spillers. 
The one is the number thing. It was really cool about this. We have a really high elevated um, arrow onto this is a little durable Excel material. The spinner is um, alternating colors. This one's alternating dark blue with white text or white with blue text. The braille is far out along the periphery of the style. And then there's a very soft um, hub and easy to grasp. And when you spin it, it's sort of an auditory thing on there. And then you can tell where that pointer is pointing to. So you can incorporate those with a lot of the games. And then complementing that one is the number spin, I mean, sorry, the alphabet spinner, which is black ink on alternating yellow little strands for each letter. Again, with a similar hub and a similar pointer, non-skid um, packing there. And then you can spin it and follow where the pointer is pointing to on that alphabet spinner. Also included for like tossing bean bags. Um, there's six different little bean bags of different colors. Um, these we don't make, obviously. We get this from an outside source. Um, those accommodate a lot of the games. Um, this is probably one of my earliest products. This probably goes back to, my goodness, late 1990s, <laughs> which are the little pop cells. So it really affords that graduation of, say, if they start with a large braille mat and then they gravitate or downsize to the papa cell and then i found it really important to, um, to put that spinner in there because i wanted them to know what that actual braille letter feels like at actual braille size um, so that's why i put that in there um, so we also have a little um, tactile box in there and I think that's it besides the print and the brown guidebooks. Um, guidebook that goes in there. And I'm wondering if I can show this very easily. But um, for like bodybuilding braille, where they use their own bodies with their hands and their feet or their knees to build um, the braille letter. In the very back, I have bodybuilding braille tips. So again, kids will get creative and build a braille letter in their own way. But say if they were building the letter E, they might put their left foot on dot one and their right foot on uh, dot five. So I don't know if you can see that or not. It's sort of a cheat sheet. It's not the only way to build the letters again. Kids will encourage the kids to get creative on how to do that. And then each page um, is dedicated to its own little like, activity. So let me just read a few of these out loud. Um, so like build a cell, place the hop -a dot mat flat on the floor, remove the numbers dots, remove the number dots one through six, say the dot numbers aloud, and have the student insert the braille dots into the correct position within the mat. Um, here's a roll a dot, uh, remove dots one through six from the hop -a dot mat and place the mat flat on the floor, then have the student roll a single die or spin the braille and print number spinner. Ask the student to insert the braille dot into the hop -a dot mat that corresponds with the number shown on the die or the spinner. And one, one game that I noticed adults love doing, it's called, um, let me see if I can find it really quickly. All feet on deck. Yeah, okay, so this is really fun. You um, just place the hop -a dot mat flat on the floor with all of the numbered dots inserted correctly to build a braille cell. Select six students and have each stand beside a different dot number. Using the braille print alphabet spinner, spin a letter and read it aloud. Each student standing next to a dot number that makes up that braille letter should place a foot, place their foot on the braille dot. Does that make sense? <laughs> okay. Um, so I have just some just fun little activities. Braille relay where you can use the two mats with two teams and have them see who's fastest going through cycles and building the whole alphabet. And um, like I said, it's just a smattering of just starter ideas and I'm sure you all will embellish upon them and I hope you do. So that's pretty much 
the product in a nutshell, pretty self-explanatory. Um, it's, it's just an option if you usually do what paper plates or hula hoops. I've seen all kinds of ways people build the braille cell and those are still usable too. So um, does anybody have any questions at this time? Erin, there is one comment in the chat from Jim Olson just saying this product has been very well received by our TVIs in Colorado. I'll oh, have to ask you. them if they've made up any of their own games and share it with you, Karen. Great yeah. product. Oh, thank you. And anybody on here, I really would love to find some way of sort of compiling or getting these um, ideas more consistently somewhere, um, just for my own sake, to know that it's being... Um, you know, it's used well and just all the creative ways people are coming up with using it. But I'm sure we'll find ways on our website to invite those conversations or ideas. Thank you, Jim. Any other questions? I know it's pretty self-explanatory. It's not too hard to understand how to use it. Did anybody fill test that's on, on the, in the group? No. Do you all have any questions just generally about field testing or how we go about product design or anything like that? We have about five minutes. <laughs> if you ever need anything field tested for O and M, I'm there for you. Thank you. I really enjoyed the, the field testing I did. Yeah, it's it's usually something people really love and for those of you who have not um, field tested for us, you know, many times we've been, well, even probably like these sensible strips, these texture graphic art tape. A lot of times we'll send out the prototypes, we'll build maybe 15 to 20 kits. And of course we don't want all those back. So one of the benefits is you usually get to keep, usually not always, but usually get to keep the prototype for future use. So that works out well. But we, we really do depend on you to kind of guide us in the right direction on what to save us embarrassment of putting something out there that's not quite right. And uh, so, you know, don't be overly kind when you feel test, you know, unless you really mean it, you know, let us know what doesn't work and we try to fix that if we can. So. Do you all still use old products like Papa Cell and <laughs> I don't even know if those are still useful anymore. Are they useful? Okay. Well, I really enjoyed this forum to just talk to you all directly more informally about our products. And this one, you know, we really haven't, especially with COVID, haven't had a lot of opportunity to showcase it at different conferences. So. Yeah. Leslie, thanks for letting me do this. Yeah, and there are a couple Appreciate more it. comments from Paige, a very neat product. I like the fact it can be used with the peers of students with visual impairments. And then Jim said that they get orders for Papa Cell all the time. So. Oh, great, great. Yeah, I'm glad it's you were. Oldies but goodies, huh? Yeah. <laughs> well, great, thank you. Thanks. No. Okay. Is there another comment that we use them with oh. adults too. So oh, yeah. it's a good well, product for adults. It is. It's, it's one of those things, even like we have folks come to APH and like, can you explain to me how the Braille cell works? You know, it's just so simple <laughs> to pull it out and show it and, and they quickly understand it. So thank you. It's good for kids that fidget a lot too. I have, I had one that was just, and so we yeah. would take breaks and I would tell them, you know, okay, make letters A through H as fast as you can. Mm -hmm. And so, and, and he loved it. I mean, so it was, it was, it works in all kinds of different ways. You know, somebody came up with an idea. I was, I was like, oh, I wish I would have thought of that before I put it out. But they, and it should have been obvious to me. Um, it's just one of those things you don't think of. But they took them and they lined them up like as if it were the um, swing cell. Mm -hmm. And I thought, oh, that's cool. <laughs> Because you could do a lot of activities like with that arrangement. So keep that in mind too. There was a coding presentation yesterday. Oh, it was a STEM presentation. And I noticed some folks were using, or a teacher was talking about using these square mats that are commercially available. We, we die cut the hole in it, but you know, you can buy these out there. And they use these for coding and just spatial concepts and orientation that's ability. Cool. So yeah, so if you want to use those, you know, <laughs> for dual purpose, you can 
maximize that too. And what's because of this um, sort of sawtooth format, the red and the blue um, mats link together really easily. So. Okay. Thanks everybody, appreciate your time. And if you need the Actually, hard point, oh, I'm sorry, more questions? I was say, as, as you're saying that, I'm thinking I have one that I'm having a problem with arc with. And I'm uh -huh. thinking I could, I could take the dots from that and do one, two, three, so he knows to tap. Mm, thank you. Very cool. Well, it wasn't my idea, but <laughs> you're welcome. <laughs> yeah. It's I don't suppose different. you had plans to sell just the numbers. Oh. Just the phone numbers. You know, I've never got that request up, but that's probably a really cool idea. And yeah, yeah if you want to submit that idea or, you know, just send me an email or, yeah, okay. as a reminder. Um, which brings me to, I'm trying to think, there's something else. Oh, here's an idea. When I presented this, at, I think I was at the Getting in Touch with Literacy Conference, the spinners. I've got all other kinds of spinner ideas. And, and I was just contemplating whether or not just a blank, like, spinner could accommodate. If we just gave you the base, you know, something that spins, could you all apply maybe textures? to the spinner or make your own spinners? I don't know if that would have any merit or use to sort of build your own spinner kind of thing. Um, well, that's just something to keep in mind. Um, Jim also said he thinks the whole uh, distance learning model has allowed us to think of which APH products can be used at home. Yes, we've been thinking about that too with parents and siblings when they're not participating with in-person learning and that Papa Cell is a good example. And Miriam says, it's like bubble wrap. And I have to agree because that's <laughs> the first thing I thought when somebody handed me one of those when I came to APH. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's fun to see those still in demand. So. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I'll tell you, as we've talked internationally, that's one of the first things they ask about. Really? We've talked to CNIB and RNIB and Vision Australia about carrying some of our products. Uh -huh. um, that's one of the things they ask about a lot. Yeah, that's good to know. Thank you. Yeah. Good. Well, um, my email address is on the end of that um, PowerPoint, which is downloadable from our um, annual meeting app. So if you have any ideas after this session. I'd love to hear from you. So, and keep in mind, if you want to field test in the future, we have field test forms too. So, thanks, Leslie. Thanks. Sure. Of course. And it. just for those of you um, that may have some time at noon tomorrow, our keynote speaker, Tyler Marin, is going to come back to the open hall because there were some there was some trouble getting into the open hall early today. So he's going to come back at noon tomorrow. So if anybody was hoping to have some time with him in a smaller group, he will be available from, uh, I think about noon to one tomorrow back in the, the open hall. So thank you, Karen, for coming today. I think this is great to do presentations in this smaller setting. And thanks to all of you. And um, I hope you enjoy the rest of your day. Thank you. So, thanks everybody. Thanks Bye. for joining us today. Bye. And Paul, thank you too. So we are wrapping mm -hmm. up the open hall for Thursday. We'll be exiting out of this room. Don't forget the open, uh, the welcome reception this evening. You can get there through the app. Um, and that begins, I believe, I'm checking real quick, at 8 o'clock following the storytelling tour that is at 6.30. And I heard Mike Hudson talking. He is going to tell stories people haven't heard before along with Rob. So you may want to tune in for uh, 6.30 because Mike's one heck of a storyteller, as you all know. So hopefully we'll see you around the conference later this week. And thank you all for joining us today.